All right, welcome to Complex Analysis by a Physicist. Today's video, we're going to go over the cauchy gorsat theorem. Some people call it the uh, Cauchy's theorem or Cauchy's integral theorem. Um, but Cauchy and Gorsat, I guess, sort of came up with it together. That's why we're calling it cauchy gorsat um, Now, naturally, I'm a physicist, so at some point, I may do something to upset some of you mathematicians in this proof, but we're going to be doing a very... Uh, straightforward proof of the cauchy gorsat theorem. So let's get started. So this pretty simply is the cauchy gorsat theorem, okay, where basically it says if we have some complex function and it's analytic in a domain containing a simple closed curve uh, C in its interior, uh, then the integral uh, or the, the path integral or line integral, I call it a path integral sometimes, but uh, some people think that's weird. Uh, but if you, if, you, if you integrate around that curve or if you integrate that function around that curve, you're going to end up with zero as a result. And what is a simple closed curve? Just as a reminder, uh, that is one of these three shapes right here. So we can see there's a triangle on the side, basically something that doesn't overlap itself and uh, basically just comes back around to its starting point, I guess. You, you got a triangle, circle, rectangle. Uh, really, it could be any, any kind of crazy shape. Um, you know, we could have a shape uh, that looks like this. But as long as it doesn't uh, overlap, that's going to be a simple closed curve, okay? So to start out this proof, let's take a look and let's just look at a, a general complex function uh, f of z which is just going to be uh, u of x, y uh, plus i, v of x, y. And from here on out, I'm not going to include the x, y, so just know that uh, this is a real component. V is the imaginary component. And then uh, we're going to try to integrate this. So we're going to integrate this over some closed curve. Uh, so we're going to have u of x, uh, y, plus i v of x y dz and we'll actually sub in dz here okay to get that we're integrating u plus i v uh times uh this uh we're going to expand this out into d x plus i d y all right now sort of expanding this out even further uh, I should keep the C there. We're going to end up getting uh, this once we expand this out and break it into real and imaginary components. Okay, So we're going to get the integral over our simple closed curve uh, of u dx minus v dy. All right? And then that's all going to be uh, plus our imaginary term integral over a simple closed curve, v dx, okay, plus u dy. All right, and so in, in, in looking at this, we really have, we have two integrals to evaluate here for the real component, and we have two integrals to evaluate here for the, uh, uh, the imaginary component. So what we need to do is we need to find a way of evaluating these integrals. To do this, let's recall Green's theorem, okay, which tells us that we can take a path integral and convert it to an area integral if it follows this form. Well, this right here, this result right here, tends to follow that form, okay? So why don't we apply Green's theorem and convert everything over, okay? So that's what we're going to do here. So let's recall from what we had before. Let's just transcribe it over here. We're going to have the integral of our, we're going to have our real part, okay? Uh, u dx minus v dy, and then add that to our imaginary component, integral of v dx uh, plus u dy, okay? And let's break these up using Green's theorem. When we do that, we're going to, this is going to convert to a double integral over our domain, okay? And when we convert this, okay, we're going to get 
a minus partial V uh, with respect to X minus a partial derivative of U with respect to Y. And then we're going to add that to our imaginary part. Again, double integral over our domain. Uh, partial derivative of u with respect to x this time minus partial derivative of v with respect to y this time and dx dy and now we actually have something uh, that doesn't look as scary okay now what we're going to do is let's try and find a way to evaluate both of these integrals because if this checks out if this works out we should get that both of these integrals together end up giving us zero okay but i want you to recall that this complex function for this proof has to be analytic okay that's part of the theorem is it has to be an analytic function which means it has to satisfy the cauchy riemann equations which the cauchy riemann equations let's just write them out here as a reminder the partial derivative of u with respect to x is equal to the partial derivative of v with respect to y and then also we have the partial derivative of u with respect to y is equal to the negative partial derivative of v with respect to x okay these are our cauchy riemann equations all right and i don't know if you notice or not but these can be directly subbed into here and here So let's go ahead and do that substitution, okay? Let's do our real part first. Okay, so starting off with the real part. We're going to have uh, the double integral over our domain. And then we're going to have the... And then, as we can see right here, we're going to have the negative partial derivative of v with respect to x minus the partial derivative of u with respect to y. And if we go right here, uh, the partial derivative of u with respect to y is the negative partial derivative of v with respect to x. And so in turn, we're going to get the negative partial derivative of v with respect to x. Then we're going to have a double negative here, so that's going to be plus... Uh, partial derivative of v with respect to x dx uh, dy that's this is obviously going to uh, be zero so we'll be integrating over zero which means that this whole integral is zero meaning that the real part is zero okay that works out how about the imaginary part though again double integral over our domain we can go back here and we can see partial derivative of u with respect to x, partial derivative of v with respect to y. These two are being subtracted. Now we can use this cauchy riemann equation right here and very easily sub that in. And we're going to get the partial derivative of v with respect to y minus the partial derivative of v with respect to y, which, again, is the same thing there. So this is zero <clears throat> this is zero we're integrating over zero so the imaginary part is zero going back to this going back to this this term chops out to zero this term chops out to zero and what do you know we just confirmed Cauchy's theorem because this entire thing is just equal to zero as the theorem states so that's a proof of uh the cauchy gorsaw theorem if you have any questions feel free to ask away in the comment section down below if you like this video you found it helpful feel free uh, to give the video a like if you want to see more videos like this consider subscribing and thank you very much for your viewership because just by viewing this video you're supporting me you're supporting my work and you're supporting this channel so thank you very much